Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your professor at Johnson County Community College. The subject of today's short screencast will be the HTML DOM or document object model. Now the DOM technically describes the logical structure of the document and the way it is accessed and manipulated according to the w3.org website, which is the official keeper of all the HTML and CSS standards. But Instead of trying to explain the DOM in all of its great glory, I just want to introduce you to the topic so you have a sense of what this means. As you've been coding your web page, I've got all my sections collapsed here. I've encouraged you to indent it in such a way that we can see the required tags and the body tag. Here I've got a div that's an outer wrapper. I've given that a width of 80% and top and bottom margins of zero, left and right margins of auto pull my content in off the edges of the outer screen. And I've also given the body a background color of this light green. Interestingly, because I've not given the outer wrapper a background color, we notice that the background color of the body bleeds through to all of these child elements. If I specifically give one of these child elements a background color, I'm going to move my comment tag so that this header gets styled with a different background color save and refresh my page, notice that the background color for the header section applies and not this green background color that the rest of the body takes. And that helps you understand the DOM. For a style sheet, it helps you understand how the styles cascade. In other words, the color for the header did not bleed to the rest of the document, but the background color for the body did. Why? Because all of these other tags are children of the body tag and that's described with the DOM. So the DOM helps you understand how styles cascade in CSS. When you're coding your HTML, I've encouraged you to code it in such a way that the DOM is more obvious. For example, this P tag is a child under this main tag. The LI tags are children tags within the UL tag. But here's something interesting. So when you've coded your HTML using good indentation, the DOM or the relationship between these tags is easier to see. But even if you haven't coded your page in such a way as to see the relationship between the tags, I want to show you one other nice trick. So here's an extreme case of code all on one line. All this HTML code is on one line. So it's really difficult to read it. It's really difficult to debug it. And it's definitely difficult to see the DOM, a relationship between the tags that are in the HTML page. But I've saved it, I'll refresh it, just to prove to you that it does not matter how many spaces, tabs, or line breaks there are between the tags, the browser still reads the page just as well if the code is all on one line or it's all on different lines and indented nicely for the developer to read. Sometimes you'll come across code like this that's been minified, run through a program that takes out all of the extra white space to make the code and make the file just as small as possible. But even so, you can always come over to your document, right click and inspect element. And the element inspector does a very nice job for you of organizing that code. This page is this one line of code, but look down here in the inspector, the head section and the body section are clearly broken out. And then the child elements within the body section, the outer wrapper div, the header, the nav, UL, LI, they're all broken out and identified for me here in the inspector. So even though this is just a first glance at what the DOM is, the document object model, you've learned a couple important things. One, you've learned that the DOM is determined by the relationship between these tags that can clearly be seen when you right click the page and inspect element. You also learn that the DOM has something to do with the cascade and the cascading style sheet. For example, if I move this comment, top comment line from the top to just below the nav and allow the nav background color to bleed through, save and refresh, now we see that the nav background color takes precedence over the body background color. But if that element in the document is not given a specific background color, it will inherit, it will cascade the background color from its parent container. So those are just a couple of important concepts about the DOM that you should know in your HTML and CSS class. The DOM becomes important when we move on to JavaScript. 
where we start interacting with this web page and creating or removing elements. For now, though, I just wanted you to know about the DOM, emphasize the fact that I do want you to have good coding practices in your HTML. I don't want you to put it all on one line like this, but to realize that even if it is all on one line, even if your code is minified, the browser will read it just the same, and you can see the relationship and the elements much more clearly if you right-click and inspect element in any browser. Later on, we'll also use the inspect element window to look at the styles that have been applied to a particular element and to even change them for the moment on the fly just to see the difference up here in the web page. Thank you for listening.